Now they are on top of the world. That's Grammy-nominated artist Mike Posner and his crew on top of the tallest mountain in the world. The musician behind hits like I Took a Pill in Ibiza reached the summit on Mount Everest last week after announcing the climb exclusively on CBS This Morning. Posner's journey helped raise more than $230,000 for the Detroit Justice Center. He joins us now with his trainer and mountain guide, John Kadrowski. This is his first interview since reaching the summit. Good morning. Congrats to you both. Yay. Thank you. Yay, yay. Mike, that, the images are just stunning. What was the feeling like to be up there? Uh, well, first of all, I, I can't really talk about climbing Mount Everest without talking about my coach, Dr. John here, and other two guys that guided me there, Dawa Dorji Sherpa and uh, Dawa Charing Sherpa. They're, they're still in Nepal. That's where they live. And uh, without them, there's no, no Everest for me, not even really a shot. So, um, one, it was really humbling to be there. And... Uh, Man, just so much work went into it. John trained me for a year and a half after I finished walking across America. And so we, we've we been through a lot together yeah. that, that year and a half. And when uh, we got to the summit, uh, I just start I just start crying <laughs> pretty hard. John, how did, came out. John, how did Mike do? You know, he was he was pretty awesome most of the time. <laughs> Maybe get on my nerve, you know, what but, about uh, the other times? Actually, you know, it, it was it was a phenomenal journey, and really, it was a testament to all the hard work he put in. You know, we worked together for about twenty months. I kept saying twenty months for twenty minutes on the summit. And that's what people don't realize is if you're lucky to get up there for twenty or thirty minutes after yeah. being on the mountain for two months after climbing over 70 other mountains all over the world. Yeah. And so the, the amount of time and energy put into it. And so I understood why we both sort of broke down on the summit with tears and joy and, and all those things. And, and the view was incredible right at sunrise. We were just very fortunate with how it all played out. So Mike, you were already in pretty good shape when you took on this challenge. You just walked across America, but you say the biggest challenge was in fact mental. How so? Uh, man, climbing Mount Everest was a lot harder <laughs> than I thought. It was, it was, it pushed me to all my limits. Um, we, we were there, as John mentioned, about two months, and just base camp is at about 17,500 feet. And so it, there's really no way to explain to somebody who hasn't been there uh, what that does to your body. You, you just don't really feel good for those entire two months and the higher we go up, so just to camp too, you know, and I, I don't really sleep up there. And so by, by the, just to give you an idea of how exhausted I was, one, when I got down, I, my body was emitting smells I had never smelled before. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, two, two, uh, you know, when we finally got back to Kathmandu, I, I fell asleep, I think for, 36 out of those first 48 hours. This is how exhausted I was. Wow. Um, mentally, you know, it's really hard. John's really good at that. Um, but you're you're at the whims of the weather. You know, there's certain days you can climb Mount Everest and there's others that it will kill you. And so the weather is like the weather at home. It's always changing and it's imperfect. And so it's an emotional roller coaster going from, you know, hey, we're going to climb today to no, we're not. This is all that's part of the journey as well. Well, I we tell had you some weather too that we had to do. You know, it was very challenging that there were two uh, cyclones that came off the Bay of Bengal. Wow. So most seasons in the 20s to the 30s, you can climb to the summit. This year we had to wait, so it was even more of a test of patience. But we had drilled that through some of our other simulations on other mountains all over the world. And so it was, a, you know, Mike was ready. He was ready to do it. Well, it's great to see the two of you sitting side by side despite the smells that were coming from Mike's body. Clearly you all still get along very well, so that's good to see. So, Mike, I, Mike, I want to know, well, first, John, I want to go to you, and then I'll go to Mike. How do you know somebody has what it takes to do this? Because I looked at some of the video and my jaw fell to the floor when I was watching what you all were doing. How do you know when somebody can do this? And how did you know Mike could do it? Well, uh, for me, it's kind of a, a long step process. I've worked with some clients I've taken to the summit before and 
when you, when you work with somebody, sometimes you say it's like, well, I knew right away you could do it, but we drill all the skill work, whether it's working with crampons, ice axes, um, doing a lot of other mountains to prepare you. And I kind of told Mike, hey, I, he actually told me, he said, I, I want to make sure that I deserve to be there. And I said, well, I can get you there if we work on other things first in a step-by-step. -step. And if you quote unquote pass everything that I have yeah. set up for you, yeah. we'll go. And that's yeah, what the criteria was. It yeah, wasn't just, hey, you're just going to show them up. The with video all the is beautiful. And, and Mike, you, it's no secret how I feel about you and how I feel about your music. And I'm fascinated by the journeys that you're always doing. Are you searching for something? Why do you do this and continue to do it? Uh, we'll see what happens next. But, you know, I, I, was, I was on Mount Everest because I want to be somebody I'm proud of. You know, uh, when I look at myself, I want to go, hey, that guy is pretty cool. And uh, so that, that's part of my journey while I was there. I want to be somebody I was proud of. Mm. And, um, are, yeah, are you somebody? Are you that person now? Are you somebody that you're proud of? It's sort of a. I think the the target moves and evolves as I move and evolve. But yeah, I'm very proud that. I can't even say say I'm really proud of this. I'm, I'm more grateful for this yeah, because yeah. Yeah. many people helped me. And like I said, uh, Dawa Cherry and Dawa Dorje, who we just got off the phone with, we were FaceTime and they're they're in Lukla still. Like, you know, without those guys helping me, I really have a shot to climb this mountain. Right. I, so, I just feel blessed. I have the yeah, I'm glad so, you're OK. So, Mike, are, are you starting training tomorrow to swim across the English, English Channel? I mean, what's next for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting. When I finished my walk, I talked to you guys. I felt like, what's next? I want to climb my Everest. Let's do this. And I don't feel like that right now. I feel like, uh, give me a dog and a girlfriend. We just stay at home for a while. <laughs> a, a dog and a girlfriend. Don't you mean a girlfriend and a dog? Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say a girlfriend and a dog. <laughs> Whatever comes first, Mike. It doesn't matter. Our values a little uh, backwards in the mountains. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, take a rest. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Congrats again. What an achievement that is. Mike Posner, John Kodrowski. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, sorry, before I go, um, yeah. you know, big I want to do this interview today was uh, I climbed to raise money for the Detroit Justice That's right. Center that does justice reform work in Detroit, my hometown. That's right. And uh, we could use your help, all your viewers, um, if you if you could please donate, whether it, whether it's one dollar, five dollars, just go to either mikeposner.com or gofundme.com slash Everest. Yeah, and, we mentioned uh, that you raised two hundred and thirty yeah, thousand dollars. Yep. We could always use more. I hear you. Yeah. We All hear right. you. And Gail, you get the dog you. first because the dog helps you get the girlfriend. <laughs> yes, often that's the case. Girls hey! like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you both.